Now I'm going to read Ezekiel 32 and verse 2. Now we're getting into my dessert. Son of man, take up a lamentation for Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and say unto him, Thou art like a young lion of the nations. Now, I've compared Pharaoh unto Paul. Just like the Old Testament king Saul, he was a type and shadow to the New Testament king Saul, who is the founder of Christianity. He is the father of that religion in his own words in 1 Corinthians 4.15. Now, I'm going to ask y'all a question. It reads, you are like a young lion of the nations. Okay, what does it mean by you are a young lion of the nations? Now, I already told y'all this is a type and shadow of Paul. So what does it mean when it says thou are like a young lion of the nations? Although that Saul is from the tribe of Benjamin, it's Judah mm -hmm. because it's from the southern kingdom. Because it's from the southern kingdom. A lot of people who study the Bible know this. The kingdom was split during Solomon's son, Rehoboam's reign. And so it was the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. And the southern kingdom consisted of who? Who can tell me? Y'all knock it off. Who is the southern kingdom? What tribes is the southern kingdom? Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Benjamin and Levi. Okay. With Judah was the tribe of Judah. So going back to my dessert. Thou art as a whale in the seas. Now, I'm going to pause right there. I'm going to bring out some revelation. Jesus right now, although he is in heaven, he is in Paul's pit. Okay? He is like Jonah. And I'm going to get that for you. Matthew 12, 40. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, a whale represents a prison. So shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So because of what Paul did, Jesus is caught in his predicament. Because Saul used Jesus like his armor bearer, like his shield. Okay, so right now, although Jesus is in heaven, he's in the pit with Paul. Because he has a huge accusation against him and that accusation is it is seen in Surrey 4 159 it is seen in Surrey 5 116 and this is the accusation did you say to the people worship you as God and worship your mother as God those are the charges right now that's pending for Jesus. That's what he's that's what he's going to be asked. Did you claim to be God? Did you say your mother is God? So right now we see that this charge is still pending on Christ. Now I'm going to go on to show you further in this scripture. And thou camest forth with thy rivers and troubles the waters with thy feet and fowls the rivers. So that's going into how his gospel, Paul called it his gospel, contaminated the Bible. God was teaching this whole time that a son or a father is not going to bear one another's sins. And guess who comes along and teaches that by one man's obedience, all men is justified. Who taught that? Paul. Paul said that. So now I want to keep going in this scripture with Jonah. Now, let's think about Jonah. Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly. So shall the son of man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Now, did Jonah die in the whale's belly? No. No, no he didn't die. 
And that's telling you how Jesus didn't die. And the Quran is the only book that tells us the truth, minus the gospel of Barnabas, that Jesus neither was killed or crucified, for Allah took him. Now I want to go to Jonah chapter 2, verse 10. And it reads, And the Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. All right, so what did Jonah do after he was released from the belly of the well? That answer is seen in Jonah chapter 3, 1 through 5. And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Jonah, arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. Now, I was studying this earlier. Now, he was told to go into Nineveh. Think about Nineveh, the nine, the nine. Now, think about it. The return of the Lord is as a woman pregnant, okay? The sign of a woman with child is the hour. A woman with child is the sign of the hour. Here we have Jesus in Paul's prison, just like Joseph in Potiphar's house, just like Joseph in Pharaoh's prison. When Jesus comes forth, he will destroy the very religion Paul created. He will tip over the hugest idol, the cross. Just think of Samson in between the two pillars. All right? And... Pillars not only are pillars, but pillars represent people. And I'm going to get that for you in Galatians 2.9. And when James, Cephas, and John, who seem to be pillars. See, these apostles were considered pillars. But there's coming a day when Jesus is going to tip over those pillars. Now, now we want to go to Judges chapter 16. Verse 25, all the way down to verse 31. And it came to pass when their hearts were merry, that they said, Call for Samson, that he may make us sport. And they called for Samson out of the prison house. And he made them sport, and they set him between the pillars. Right now, Jesus is being made a mockery. As you just seen it. Y'all just seen what the Israelis think of Jesus. They're making sport of him. Samson also was a type and shadow of Christ. And I'm going to keep going. And Samson said unto the lad that held him by the hand, Suffer me that I may feel the pillars whereupon the house standeth, that I may lean upon them. Now the house was full of men and women, and all the lords of the Philistines were there, and there were upon the roof about 3,000 men and women that held, that beheld while Samson made sport. And Samson called unto the Lord and said, O oh Lord God, remember me, I pray thee, and strengthen me, I pray thee, only this once, O oh God, that I may be at once avenged of the Philistines for my two eyes. And Samson took hold of the two middle pillars upon which the house stood and on which it was borne up of the one with his right hand and on the other with his left hand. This is a picture of Jesus in the Hades tipping over the cross. That's the first thing he's going to destroy is the cross. Verse 30, and Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. And he bowed himself with all his mouth, with all his might. And the house fell upon the lords and upon all the people that were therein. So the dead which he slew at his death were more than they which he slew in his life. Then his brother and all the house of his father come down, came down and took him and brought him up and buried him between Zorah and Estile 
in the burying place of Manoah, his father. And he judged Israel 20 years. Now, this type and shadow of Jesus returning and tipping over the cross is very accurate. You know why? Because Jesus didn't die yet. When he comes back, then he will die. And according to the Muslims' belief, is that he will be buried right on the side of the prophet, Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. Just like the man of Judah, the old man that deceived him, he was buried right next to him. So I just showed you from the Bible that there's coming a day when the cross will be destroyed and I am waiting, I am waiting expecting that day to come because Christianity is nothing but idolatry. Now it's time for us to get in these scripts. Is y'all ready? Yes. Now I'm going to go over this and go over the same scriptures, but I'm going to kind of teach it and combine what I said in my class today uh, with what I'm saying tonight your righteousness is going to have to exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the pharisees now that is talking about the righteousness that the apostate paul preaches and that is all men are justified through one man's obedience now i'm going to show you something because a lot of people have no clue that jesus is stuck in this predicament with Paul until the day he comes and destroys the very religion that Paul created. Now, the sign of a woman with child is the sign of the hour. And this goes along with Jonah. Remember, let's get the scripture about Jonah. A lot of people fail to realize that Jonah did not die in the whale's belly. Right now, Jesus, although he is in heaven, he is in Paul's pit right along with him because he has a huge accusation against him. And that accusation is, did you say to the people, worship you as God and your mother as God? And that is seen in the Quran 5, 1, But we're going to get to Jonah. Matthew 12, 40, for as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the son of man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. What did Jonah do after he was released from the belly of the whale? We know, according to Jonah 2, 10, it reads, and the Lord spake unto the fish. Now, this fish represents a prison. It represents a prison house. And it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. Jonah 3 1. And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go unto Nineveh. Now, Nineveh is a sign of a woman with child. You get it? Nine, 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 nine. Yeah. Think about it. He's in the belly of a whale. In other words, this whale is pregnant. With something, metaphorically. Think about his birth. You ever thought about it? Why did Jesus come supernaturally with no father? I'll tell you that that whale was pregnant with something. That whale was pregnant with Jesus. And there's going to come a day when the word of the Lord is going to come to Jesus a second time. And he's going to preach that bidding that his father wants him to preach. That great city and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. So this is going into how after Jesus, like he was born of a woman, when he is released from that pit, he is going to destroy the cross. He's going to destroy the cross. Right now, he's in this predicament with Paul. I'm going to read Ezekiel 32, verse 2. Son of man. Jesus was called son of man, wasn't he? 
Take up a lamentation for Pharaoh king of Egypt. Now that represents Paul. Paul was also accused of being an Egyptian. And say unto him, Thou art like a young lion of the nations. Now why a young lion of the nations? Because although Saul or Paul is from the tribe of Benjamin, the tribe of Benjamin is also called the tribe of Judah because it's the southern kingdom. And thou art as a whale in the sea. So Paul has a prison. In the Hadiths, it is called in the Arabic tongue, Bulas. Paul has a prison with his name on it. And Jesus, he will be delivered from that prison. Once he says what he says in Quran 5, 116, glory be to you. How could I ever say what I had no right to say? You would have known it. And then he goes on to say, you know what's hidden within me, but I don't know what's in you. When Jesus makes that confession that Jesus alone, that Allah alone is Lord. Now I want to get back to Jonah. Jonah, he came to the city. And this was the second time the word of the Lord came to him. I'm telling you, Jonah is a type and shadow of Jesus. The word of the Lord came to him the first time. But the second time that the word of the Lord comes to him, he is going to destroy the cross. He's going to destroy the pig and he's going to get rid of the Jazia tax. So now I want to keep going in Jonah 3, 2. Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. Now, this is the kind of preaching that God loves. He loves to see the cross annihilated. He wants that cross destroyed. He wants those pillars tipped over. And we're going to get into those pillars in just a minute. So Jonah arose and went unto Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days journey. And Jonah began to enter into the cities a day's journey. And he cried and said, yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be thrown down or overthrown. Now we know that Jesus, he fasted for 40 days, just like Moses. Okay, so the people of Nineveh believed God, proclaimed a fast, and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them. So there's coming a day when Jesus will no longer be called God. People will know that Allah alone is Lord over all the worlds. There's coming a day. I told you, a woman with child is the sign of the hour. Here we have Jesus in Paul's prison, just like Joseph in Potiphar's house, just like Joseph in Pharaoh's prison. When Jesus comes forth, he will destroy the very religion Paul created. He will tip over the hugest idol, the cross. Just think of Samson in between the two pillars. Now, pillars can also represent people. And that's in Galatians 2, 9. And when James, Cephas, and John, who seem to be pillars, okay? Jesus is going to tip over all these pillars, all these preachers, these pastors. Everything that has to do with Christianity will be tipped over. Now, I'm going to show you that precept of Jesus coming back destroying the cross it is seen in the life and story of samson you got it okay he tore the lion apart okay with his bare hands okay that is going into the teaching of paul the teachings of paul just like samson tore that lion apart jesus teachings destroyed the teachings of paul he literally sunk paul in the Red Sea. Did you know that Jesus was the only person to say, beware of wolves and sheep clothing? And he was literally talking about Paul. Judges 16, 25. And it came to pass when their hearts were merry that they said, call for Samson that he may make us sport. And they called for Samson out of the prison house and he made them sport and they set him between the pillars now right now jesus is a mockery 
Ain't nobody taking him serious, okay? He is a mockery. The only ones who respect Jesus in the proper balance is the Muslims, okay? We in Islam, we know that he's nothing more than a messenger. And we accept him as the Messiah genuinely, okay? In an authentic way. We know the truth about Jesus. We know that he was not God. Peace be upon him. Verse 26, and Samson, and Samson said unto the lad that held him by the hand, Suffer me, that I may feel the pillars whereupon the house standeth, that I may lean upon them. Now the house was full of men and women, and all the lords of the Philistines were there. And there were upon the roof about 3,000 men and women that beheld while Samson made sport. And Samson called unto the Lord and said, O Lord God, Remember me, I pray thee, and strengthen me, I pray thee, only this once, O God, that I may be at once avenged of the Philistines for my two eyes. Jesus been seeing all of this wickedness of people worshiping him, all this idolatry, making him even wish he wasn't born, all those precepts in Jeremiah when Jeremiah was like cursed be the day I was born and Job all that is going into everything that Jesus has been seeing just think of Jesus he loves God he associate no partners with God and here he is seeing everybody worship him as God when he's not God okay he wants to be avenged for his two eyes, just like Samson. Now, Judges 16, 29, And Samson took hold of the two middle pillars upon which the house stood and on which it was borne up, of the one with his right hand and the other with his left hand, like a cross. This is a picture of Jesus tipping over the cross, which is seen in the Hadiths, okay? It is seen. The first thing that Jesus will do is destroy the cross and that is Paul's religion. Going on. And Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. And he bowed himself with all his might. And the house fell upon the lords and upon all the people that were therein. So the dead which he slew at his death were more than they which he slew in his life. Then his brother and all the house of his father came down and took him and brought him up and buried him between Zorah and Ashtal in the burying place of Manoah, his father. Now, I believe that Manoah is representing how Jesus will be buried next to the prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him. And it's bringing out how Jesus didn't die yet. When, he, when the word of the Lord comes to Jesus the second time, just like it came to Jonah the second time, after Jesus takes care of his business, Jesus will die. He will die. Now, I'm going to show you what I mean when I told you, except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now, Jesus, he sunk the horse and his rider in the Red Sea. Now, what is that speaking of in Exodus chapter 15? That is speaking of the words of Christ sunk Paul. It sunk Christianity. You're going to see that the words of Christ were directed at Paul. And it's going to sink Paul. Now, Matthew 16, 1, the Pharisees also with the Sadducees came and tempting, desiring him that he would show them a sign from heaven. A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it but the sign of the prophet Jonah. Now, Jonah didn't die in the belly of the well, just like Jesus did not die yet. He was alive in the belly of the well, and Jesus is alive right now, okay? Now I want to keep going. And he left them and departed, and when his disciples were come to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. Then Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is it because we have taken no bread. Now God speaks in metaphors. And for you who do not believe this, Jesus is speaking in a metaphor right now. Because think about it. He's talking about leaven. Now the leaven is what? Yeast that makes the bread rise. 
And God instructed the children of Israel during the Passover, during the killing of the firstborn son, not to eat bread that rise. What is that going into? Do not believe the teaching that Jesus rose from the dead. Don't believe that. Okay. So most people who study that probably was around Jesus when he said that they probably caught it because you got to understand that the Pharisees, they believed in the resurrection of the dead. They believed in a lamb that would come and die for everybody's sins, just like the great prophet John the Baptist. He believed the same way. It was a teaching that was going around, and it was a Pharisee's teaching. And Jesus, man, he was led by God, peace be upon him, because he said, take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. He's not talking about actual yeast. And they reason among themselves, saying, is it because we have taken no bread, which when Jesus perceived, he said unto them, O ye of little faith, why reason ye among yourselves? Because you have brought no bread? Do ye not yet understand, neither remember the five loaves of the five thousand, and how many baskets ye took up, neither the seven loaves of the four thousand, and how many baskets you took up? How is it that ye do not understand that I spake it not to you concerning bread? that you should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Now he's going to open your eyes right here. Then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of the bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. There you go. The teachings of the Pharisees. Now, what was the teachings of the Pharisees? The teachings of the Pharisees was that it would be sufficient for one man to die for the sins of Israel. They believed in a lamb as a person dying for everybody's sins. Ooh, so now we're going to get to Paul. Oh, your eyes open up yet? Acts 26, 5, which knew me from the beginning if they would testify that after the most straightest sect of our religion I lived a Pharisee Paul was a Pharisee Paul was a Pharisee Jesus didn't get along with the Pharisees okay you're going to see that the Pharisees were the wolf in sheep clothing now I'm going to take you to Acts 23 and 6 but when Paul perceived that one part of the Sadducees, but when Paul perceived that the one part were Sadducees and the other Pharisees, he cried out in the council, men and brethren, I am a Pharisee, the son of a Pharisee. So Paul was a Pharisee and his dad was a Pharisee. Okay. Of the hope and resurrection of the dead, I am called in question. See, Paul believed in the resurrection. He believed in one man dying for everyone's sins. This was a false teaching that Jesus warned about. You're going to understand that Saul of the Old Testament is a type and shadow of the Saul of the New Testament. Saul was the king of Israel and Paul or Saul is the king of the Christian church. He is the founder of Christianity. Now, Jesus tried to warn you about Paul. He tried to warn you. Matthew 7, 15, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Now, I'm going to read that again for you. Beware of false prophets. Beware of Paul, which come to you in sheep clothing from the tribe of Benjamin. But inwardly, they are ravening wolves. The symbol of the tribe of Benjamin is the wolf. Just like King Saul was from the tribe of Benjamin and the symbol was the wolf, it's the same thing with the Saul of the New Testament. He was the wolf in sheep clothing that Jesus warned us all about. You see, the horse and his rider has been sunk in the Red Sea. And the Red Sea is the words of Christ. If you follow the words of Christ... It will sink the letters of Paul, and it will sink Paul ultimately. If you follow the letters of Christ, it will sink Paul every time. Remember, Jesus warned them of one coming doing miracles. 
He warned them of one coming out of the wilderness. And Paul was in the wilderness of Arabia. He was in the wilderness. And then he was in Damascus after he came out of the wilderness. Okay, just like John the Baptist was in the wilderness. John the Baptist is a type and shadow of the Apostle Paul. John the Baptist was walking around in animal clothing. He had on a camel's uh, hair and he had on a, a leather girdle. Okay, now Paul, he is the wolf in sheep clothing. John the Baptist was in prison. Guess who else was in prison? Paul was in prison. According to the Bible, John the Baptist was beheaded. According to history, Paul was beheaded. John the Baptist had a leather belt, okay? And Paul, he had a belt that the prophet Agabus bound him with. The prophet Agabus told Paul that chains and afflictions abide him. In other words, he said, Paul, there's a prison waiting for you with your name on it. John the Baptist, he had his own followers. He did not follow Jesus. And it's the same thing with Paul. Paul had his own followers and Paul did not follow after the teachings of Jesus. John the Baptist was in the relationship ministry, worried about who Herod was married to. The Apostle Paul has new laws on marriage, and he forbids multiple wives, which the Torah does not prohibit, and he wishes all men to be single just like he is, okay? You're going to understand that Paul has been the wolf in sheep clothing this whole time. So I'm going to wrap it up. I am going to wrap it up. And what I want to tell you is what I've been telling you. Paul is a type and shadow of Potiphar. Paul is Potiphar. The church don't have Jesus. The church has Paul. They have the fur. What is the fur? The wolf in sheep clothing. The church don't have Jesus. Jesus did not sleep with Potiphar's wife. He dodged Potiphar's wife. Okay? And the only thing that Potiphar's wife had in her hands was his garment. Now, who is Jesus' garment? It is Paul, the wolf in sheep clothing. Paul is like the Pharaoh. He refuses to let God's people go. Okay? Think about the tribe of Benjamin in Judges chapter 19 and 20. You should read that story. How they abused a concubine, and that concubine represents the church, all night long till the day sprung the next day. So there's coming a day. When Paul will be forced to let go of the church. He will be forced to let go of the church. So you see, when you type in abuse in your Bible app, you'll see that it only brings up Saul of the Old Testament and Saul of the New Testament. God is trying to let you know through his scriptures that Paul is the wolf of in sheep clothing, and that Paul's teachings have been abusing the church. Right now, the church is committing idolatry. And guess whose fault is it? It's your boy, Paul. Okay? He taught the opposite of what God taught. God taught that every man would die for their own sins. He taught that the son shall not die for the father, and the father shall not die for the son. Every man will die for their own sins. That's the way God taught. According to Ezekiel, it's called the way of the Lord. The way of the Lord is equal, but yet you say the way of the Lord is unequal. Why? Because the Pharisees, the children of Israel, always wanted the son to bear the sins of the father. And they actually had this old crazy belief. 
that there was going to come a person that would die for the house of Israel. And that belief right there is the leaven that Jesus warned his disciples about. All right. Assalamu alaikum to my brothers in the truth. And shalom, Israel. I hope you wake up and come out of those cults. Come out of those camps. They are all going to fall. You know why? Because y'all all under Paul. Y'all fail to realize that the Pharisees were the wolf in sheep clothing. And the ultimate wolf in sheep clothing was a Pharisee. And his name is Paul. And the Quran has the truth. And even the Hadith has a prison named after Paul. There's a prison waiting for Paul. Okay, I teach type and shadows all the time. There's a story about Joseph in the prison of Pharaoh. And there were two men. One was a butler. One was a baker. What does a baker do? A baker makes things rise. That baker, my friend, is the apostle Paul. And the butler, hmm, that's Jesus because Jesus is nothing but a servant. He's in the same predicament with Paul until the last day. And you'll see if you read the story in Genesis that the butler was restored back to his office. But guess who was impaled? It was the baker. It was the baker, okay? All these stories point to what's going to happen with Paul and Jesus. If you don't know about the wickedness of Paul, you're missing a major important piece to your puzzle, to your prophecy. None of your types and shadows is going to work without Paul. Paul is the thief. He is the thief Jesus warned his disciples about. Peace.